Hey guys, Mr. Roden here. Um, we're just going to go over your congruent, congruent triangles test really quick. And remember to fix the problem, write a sentence, what you did wrong, explanation or two, a sentence or two, and then get them to me as soon as possible. And I can give you those half points back. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and give that a try. All right. So the first problem, ladies and gentlemen, was uh, triangle BID is congruent to triangle ARM. Uh, list all pairs of corresponding parts below. Okay, so remember guys, we know that uh, B corresponds with A, so we can just list them off. Angle B is congruent to angle A, and then angle I is congruent to angle R, and angle D is congruent to angle M. We also know that, so we're, we just, all we did is just go in order. And most of you got this, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time doing this. Now, and then we're just going to go, okay, so now let's take the first two letters of this one. So we know that B, we know that BI, side BI, is congruent to um, AR, side AR. And then we know that ID is congruent to RM. And then we also know that DB is congruent to MA, side MA, and we're done. Cool. All right, so now the next thing is just to kind of test why these things are congruent or not congruent. Now, right away, if you notice, we have side, side, A, or ASS. -S. We don't want that, so this is not possible. So this would be not possible if this is a right off the bat. This is not possible. This is a um, can't do this. OK. All right. So the next one after that is, well, there's a couple things you can do on this one. Um, well, if these lines are parallel, then you know that a couple things, you know that these two angles here are congruent. I, I'm doing two. And then you know that these angles are right here are congruent because the alternate interior angles. Um, you also know that C is the midpoint of EB. C is the midpoint of EB. So you know that CB is congruent to EC. And we have another piece of information here. We know that these two angles here are congruent because of vertical angles. So there's a couple things you could do here. You could do A, S, A, or you could do angle, angle, side. Or it looks like you, you could do angle, side, angle also. ASA, um, ASA or angle, angle, side looks like the ones you could work. Remember, guys, if angle, 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 ASA always means that um, AAS also works. Okay. So those are what we should have. You should have ASA or angle, angle side for that one. All right. So the next one, this says hint, find the missing sides. Well, guys, these are both right triangles. So we would use the Pythagorean theorem of a squared plus B squared equals C squared. So in this case, now right away, let's just make sure before this, you cannot say that these two triangles are congruent because what do you have? You have a side and you have a right angle or an angle, but you don't have a you don't have a hypotenuse that's congruent to a hypotenuse. So what you need to do is find the missing sides. Well, if you do a squared plus b squared equals c squared on the left triangle, you get 12 here. All right. Now you could stop there and you could say, well, if I get 12 here, then this is just ASA or excuse me, SAS. So you could say SAS here. Or if you keep going you could find that this is 13 and you could just look at all the sides and you could say this is SSS because all the sides are the same. Or you could look at it and say HL. So there's lots of different things you can do here. You could do SAS, SSS, HL. Okay. All right. Um, next one. So this one is saying that GR is parallel to TE. So GR is parallel to TE and GR is congruent to TE, okay? Now, since they're parallel, we can all we can say that this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. Now, 
we cannot say what we cannot say is we can't say these two angles are congruent because we don't know that GT and RE are parallel. So we can't say that. All right. So what do we have here now? We also have the um, we also have the what do you call it? The uh, reflexive property here. OK, so what do we have? We have side angle side. This is going to be side angle side. That's the only way we can do this problem. We have side. We have angle. And then we have the reflexive side in between. So side angle sides on that one. OK. All right. This one. AE is the perpendicular bisector of CB. Well, then what does that mean? If something is a perpendicular bisector, well, first of all, it's going to be a right angle. And second of all, it's going to bisect CB. Okay, well, bisect means it's going to create two congruent state, congruent sec segments. That's what it means to be a bisector. That means E is a midpoint. Okay, if something is a bisector, then where it hits, it's a midpoint. So E is a midpoint because AE is a perpendicular bisector. So what do we have now? Well, we know we have a side, we have an angle, and we also have this reflexive side right here. Okay, see that? Now, we cannot say HL here because we don't have any hypotenuse information. So we have side, angle, side. So this one has to be SAS. There's nothing else you can do besides SAS here. Okay, any questions? All right, so the next one is uh, 3x, uh, excuse me. So this one is going to be a systems of equations. So what you want to do is you, because we have X's and Y's, we want to write two different equations. So the first equation we can write is Y plus one equals X. I can set the, if they are, if they are congruent to each other, the, um, the corresponding parts will be congruent also. And then we have X plus three equals three Y. So those are our two equations. So what I'm going to do is every time I see, I think I'm going to do this. I know that X equals Y plus one. So when I see a Y, I'm going to put, put it into this equation. I'm going to put a, um, excuse me, X equals Y plus one. So when I see an X in this equation, I'm going to replace it with a Y plus one in this equation. So instead of an X, I'm going to replace that with a Y plus one plus three equals 3y. And then I'm going to combine like terms. So I get y plus 4 equals 3y. I'll subtract a y from both sides. So I get 4 equals 2y. And then I'll divide by 2. I'll divide by 2. And I get y equals 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And then I'll just simply put a 2 into the other equation to figure out what x is. So I'll take this X right here, maybe, and replace it with a 2. See that? So now I have Y plus 1 equals 2. And I'll simply just subtract 1 from both sides. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, we see X, Y. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Sorry. So it says Y equals 2. So I'm going to replace this Y right here with a 2. So I have 2 plus 1 equals X, right? And so 2 plus 1 equals 3, so x equals 3. So our solution is going to be x is 3 and y is 2. And I'm done. All right, next one. What other piece of information do we need to know um, for the triangles to be congruent? Well, D is the midpoint, right? So you know that BD is congruent to C, uh, CD. And you also know that AB is congruent to AC. So AB is congruent to AC. Well, there's a couple things you could do. Um, D is the midpoint of AB. Okay. D is the midpoint of, and AB is congruent to AC. Okay. So right now, um, using, oh, and it's using HL and that's the key right there. We, we want to use HL. So if we wanted to know for HL, we would just have to know that AD, uh, segment AD is perpendicular to BC because if we want to use HL, we know we have to have hypotenuse leg, hypotenuse leg, right? 
Now we could also say this is side, 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 because if you do three, this is side, 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 or if you use the reflexive side, but we want to use HL on this problem. Okay. So that was the key that you wanted to use HL on this problem. So you'd have to know that AD is, is perpendicular to BC. All right, let's move on. Now let's do some proofs, guys. All right, so on this proof right here, first of all, it says that um, the first proof, I'm just going to write down my givens. So I know that M is the midpoint of LP. So M is the midpoint of LP. Okay, and that's a given statement. And uh, so that's step one. And I know that, um, what else do we have? Um, LN. Oh, so once I have this, so if M is the midpoint of angle of line LP, then I know that LM is going to be congruent to PM. So I know LM is going to be congruent to um, PM. And the reason why is that's the definition, that's the definition of a midpoint. Okay. All right. Number three, the next thing I can say is I can say um, LN is parallel to PO. So LN is parallel to PO. So LN is parallel to PO. Okay. And that's a given. So now what I can say after that is I can say that I can say two things. I could either say that angle L is congruent to angle P. Angle L. Let's undo that. Angle L is congruent to angle P. And or angle N is congruent to angle O. Angle N is congruent to angle O. And the reason I can say those two things, guys, is alternate interior angles. If lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are congruent. So it's just alternate interior angles theorem. Let me get rid of myself here. All right. So now what do we have here? So we could say these two things are congruent right now because of angle, angle, side. So what you could do now is you could say there's a couple ways you could go. You could now say that the two triangles are congruent. You could say that triangle L M N is congruent to triangle P O M because of angle angle side. And then what you could do after that is you could say that L N is congruent to O P because of CPCTC, okay? So that's one way you could go. Now, what happens if you just made one, what if what happens if you did one of the congruent angles with the alternate interior angles? So let me, so let me, oh, let me go back here. Let me, so here's what I'm saying here, guys. Get rid of all this. So let's say you did a di little differently here. So let me erase this. So let's say you didn't do this part. Let's say you only did LP, L and P. Okay, so let's say you didn't do this, these ones down here. So let me get rid of those. So let's say you didn't do that. All right, so what you could do next is you could do the vertical angles here, right? So you could say that these two angles are congruent to these two angles. This angle is congruent to this angle. So now what we could say, ladies and gentlemen, is we could say, uh, we could say angle L, M, N is congruent to angle P M O because of vertical angles there, vertical angles. And then you could say the two triangles are congruent. So you could say triangle L M N is congruent to triangle O P M because of angle side angle. Okay. Which remember, if you have angle side angle, you always have angle angle side. And then you could say the two side, you can now say that LN, I'm gonna go up here, LN is congruent to OP because of CPCTC. And you're done.
Okay, so there's two two ways to go here. You can use you can go the um, ASA route or you can do the angle angle S A A S route. Okay, awesome. Okay, all right. So this next one is we have um, angle Y is congruent to angle X. So angle Y is congruent to angle X, and that is because this is step one. That's a given. So angle Y is congruent to angle X, simple given there. And then we know that WZ, WZ bisects angle W. So that's a given, all right? So once we know that, once we know that WZ is an angle bisector of angle W, then what we can do is we can now state that angle angle y w z is congruent to angle x w z okay so these two angles right here are congruent and the reason why is that's the definition of an angle bisector okay Definition of an angle bisector. Now, we can also say that, um, what do we have here? Oh, we can also say that um, WZ is congruent to WZ because of the reflexive property. So we can say that, the reflexive property. So now we can say that... Um, what can we say now, guys? We can say that uh, the two triangles are congruent. We can say, give myself a little more room here. Sorry, I don't have my room. Oh, can't make myself any more room. So we can now say that triangle W, Y, Z is congruent to triangle W, X, Z because of angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. Because we have two angles and a side. Now you can't use HL because you don't know it's a perpendicular bisector. You don't know this line is a perpendicular bisector. Okay, and then now we can just state that W, Y is congruent to W, X because of C, P, C, T, C. And we're done. All right, last one here. So we're going to pull these two triangles apart. So pulling these two triangles apart really quick, guys. So when I pull this apart, this is going to be H, this is going to be L, and this is going to be I. And then I pull it over here. Okay, so this is going to be M, this is going to be H, and this is going to be J down here. All right. Now, so our first statement is LH, I'm just gonna write down all my givens here. So LH congruent to GH. And also HM congruent to HI. And that's just all given. Okay, so let's mark that in our picture. So LH, LH, is congruent to GH. JH. L A L H is congruent to this is a J here, sorry. JH. Okay. So we can say that LH and JH are congruent. So these two lines are congruent right here. And um, we so we can also say that HM so H M right here is congruent to H I right here. Now, if you notice on this, do you see how they both share angle H? They both share angle H. So if they both share angle H, then we can say they are congruent. So now we can say that angle H is congruent to angle H because of the reflexive property. Okay, reflexive. 
And so now we can say the two triangles are congruent. We can now say that triangle H L I is congruent to triangle H J M because of S A S side angle side. And then what we can do after that, ladies and gentlemen, is we can say that L I is congruent to angle to J M side L I is congruent to J L M. L I is congruent to J M. And that is because of C P C T C. L I is congruent to J M because of C P C T C. Cool. All right, let's do the proof and then we'll call this video good. Uh, excuse me, the construction. So let me pull up, let me, uh, I'm going to pause this really quick, guys, and then I'll pull up my. Uh... Okay, so on this one, this, this construction right here, we want to, um, we want to prove that, um, we want to prove by construction that the triangle we construct is going to be congruent to this one up here, this, uh, this triangle, what, BVR. Now, I, I apologize, it's a little backwards, so it's a little different looking one on your paper, but it'll be the same process. So what I would do, guys, is I would use, I said you could use angle, angle, side, but I think um, angle, side, angle would work a lot better. So I also would use angle, side, angle. So here's the deal. I need to show that you, there's two sides here. So first of all, I'm going to construct an angle. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put my compass on um, triangle BVR, and I'm just going to make a, make a, make a, a slash. And I'm going to come down here to angle J. And I'm going to do that same, same arc, okay? And I need to see these arcs, guys. That's how you get the credit. I need to see these, these compass marks like this. Then I'm going to come up here. I'm going to shrink my compass around a little bit here. And I'm going to measure this distance between uh, that opening right there. I'm going to lock my compass. I'm going to bring my compass down here. I'm going to swing this around a little bit, I think. I'm going to lock it. Swing it around a little bit here. Okay. Like that. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this, just like, oh, uh, like that. Sorry. I took way my, too much work. Okay, so then I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna construct an angle. So I'm gonna go through that, and I'm just gonna keep it, keep that going for a while. Sound good? So I've constructed angle B at J right now. Next thing I'm going to do, angle side. So now I'm going to get a side. Hopefully I can stretch this compass out to get the side length. So I'm just going to put my needle here. My guess is I won't be able to quite stretch that long. So let me do this. Uh, let me just flip this around. Let's do this. Let's do this. Come around here. Flip this around. Like this that there unlock it stretch it as long as i can we'll lock it we'll make a mark here i'll come back down here and then i'll stretch it out to here make a mark but that's not long enough so i'm going to come up here i'm going to unlock my compass i'm just going to stretch it this much here i'm going to lock it i'm going to come over here and i'm going to do like that all right, so this is going to be um, J, uh, B, V, R. So this is going to be, uh, I think that's going to be angle M over here if I did it right. It's going to be angle M. So this will be point M right here. That was a little long here. This is point M. Okay, now the next thing I want to create is this angle right here, angle R at, at point M. So I'm just going to come over over here. I'm going to put my compass there. I'm going to spin this thing around. And I just want to put, open my compass up a little bit like that. Lock it. Let's come out and do that. Come down here. Put it right there. Create that arc again. And then I'm going to go ahead and go measure my opening up here. 
from here to here, unlock, lock, come down here, put that arc right here, make that mark here, and then now I'm ready to create that angle. And what's going to happen is as I go through that and go through that, just like that, I have recreated. So that those two triangles are the same. Okay. Congruent by ang angle, side, angle. And we're done. So I hope this was helpful. And let get those corrections to me as soon ASAP so I can get those points into the gradebook. See you later. Bye.